It's an idiomatic expression that I've seen translated different ways. We used, um, when we first started, take the leap. But a more literal translation is kind of bend or break. It really speaks to risk taking and kind of going with the flow. So a tree can bend in the wind or, you know, um, such. Um, but if it's rigid, it's going to break. And, and our um, work in that sense is, since it's all improvised work, it's, it's always unpredictable what might happen. So critical to, to, to us making our work work is this ability to really be flexible and to go with wherever one particular or several particular members of the ensemble sort of bend the work in whatever direction. I was in Japan as part of the Willamette University Tokyo International University Faculty Exchange Program and um, I was doing a jazz class and also had my um, uh, free improvisation group coming. Um, one of the members of that group was Georg Hoffman, who's Norica Sorica. And so it happened that one night we were out in Kawagoi um, at a Chinese restaurant for a reception for another colleague and obviously I wasn't a local and uh, a TIU faculty member who was there you know asked who are you what are you doing here and I explained and she said uh, oh well I'm a performance artist and I said well we're really interested in collaborative work between media in our group as improvisers it really lends itself to that and um, she said oh well not me no no not me but but I know these dancers who would be very interested in this. One of these dancers, um, oddly enough, uh, at the time was, uh, was her boyfriend. But uh, another one of these dancers in this, this group of, of artists was Makoto, who was her teacher. A couple of days later, Makoto, Mao, who's also in the current iteration of the group, um, and, uh, and this other guy who's no longer with us, um, met us um, for rehearsals, and at that point there were four musicians and three dancers. And uh, we started playing, and it was good, and in the meantime they had already arranged a gig. Um, the dancers, um, you know, had a, ha have a good amount of notoriety in Tokyo, especially in this sort of avant-garde or experimental scene. They had played for many years with Papataro Humara, which was a, a noted international touring company. and. Uh, so they set up a, a, a gig for us at a place called Session House that does new music and dance. And the house was full, which was amazing because we weren't even a group. We weren't anything. He just sent out a blast and, and people came. And uh, so we did two sets, not really knowing each other, not anything, just going on instinct, e even as we do today. And um, it was fantastic. It just you know we were all like this and so um, we said you know this is really something that we ought to pursue and in fact we did the summer after that so this would have been the summer of 2007 everyone came to Oregon we did a video we did a concert here and that went well and then you know over the years the group evolved and pared itself down to this current quartet configuration and um, and uh, we did another video touring in Switzerland two years ago, a DVD release called Easy, Live at La Formi. And, uh, and so here we are today. What's on the, the tape now is completely improvised. I knew that Makoto was going to start in the dark with the flashlight. That's all I knew. That's all that was planned. Everything else was completely spontaneous. 
the artists are all very good at this and very experienced at this. And um, to a certain extent, uh, we know each other very well. I mean, as an ensemble, we've been functioning, albeit in an irregular way, but for seven years. But Georg and I have been playing together for 30 years. Um, we started playing straight ahead jazz standards kind of stuff together and moved to original compositions exclusively, but in a more traditional jazz way, to more compositions as signposts for free improvisations, to eventually just dispensing with any sort of preset notion. This particular iteration of our, our performances here and overseas this fall, the set, is another player that, that Ann Kresge uh, made for us because there's um, uh, a lot of interaction, physical interaction, let alone whatever sort of feelings of the moment interaction going on between the dancers and the set. And obviously the musicians aren't touching it and spinning around with it and seducing it oh. as it seemed they were or talking to it as they were. But nonetheless, it creates an environment This piece is called Light Labyrinth. It involves hanging pieces that I see as books writ large. Um, it incorporates printmaking and painting and drawing. My challenge was to make something that could go on the road, that has kinetic elements, that can work with the dancers, that can work with light source behind it, but also, while at Project Space, have a life of its own. Themes I was working on are derived from the, uh, my inspiration as an artist in general, within the context of my own work, but also the things I find in the performance work of this group. Um, the themes I have are language, nature, alchemy, and labyrinth slash journey, because these performers and musicians, dancers, um, are, are not uh, literal or narrative, but they evoke those things through pretty abstract work. and so. I, as a stage set designer in this case, I needed to respond to them but not dictate to them. So I feel like my hope is that people find in this whatever they find in it. And, and so it's broad enough, universalized enough, but also personal enough. And that's my goal. <laughs> if we're doing our job the way we hope to as artists in this collective endeavor, then we're sensitive to every element of the environment. That's what the structure is. So yes, we're improvising, but we're not kind of uh, in some kind of black room with our ears stuffed and something over our eyes. We're just, our improvisation is a, is a response to our feelings in that moment, which uh, you know, are connected to what's the dancer doing, or maybe how is an audience reacting. I mean, it's not, it's not a show where we want to find a way to make them happy kind of thing. But if there's, there's always energy coming out or going into an audience, and, and you can't help but be a performer and, and take notice and respond to that. Um, as well as lighting. You know, when the light goes all red, it, it, it's just a very different feeling for all of us in that room than if the light is quite bright. It makes the set look differently. It makes the actors look different. It's a, it's a different vibe. And if we're, you know, improvising and playing music that's just an expression of our impressions and such, or dancing in the same way, um, then that can't help everything interact. I'd also say that um, it's not dance, and it's not music, and it's not music for the dancers, or dance to the music, or all of those things to the set or from the set. It really is a, um, in, in our approach, and we've talked about this quite a bit amongst ourselves, it, 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 it's a conversation. It's not a background foreground. And in fact, in that conversation, any um, one particular element may take the foreground. Even, you know, the set, which is not moving or making any sound unless someone makes sound with it, um, there are times when the musicians are almost silent, or silent, and the dancers are completely still. So who's in the forefront? It's, in fact, some other element, in this case, the set. Um, 
in those those gigs concerts performances that we've done without a set then okay there's just one less person to take but any one person during the performance can establish a direction any one person can change the direction there are times when we go in opposite directions um, in some ways, a traditional notion of going opposite directions is you're not playing together. But in fact, we are playing together. We're just choosing to go like this. In other words, everything is a reaction to everything else. If I'm doing my job, I'm playing with my eyes. And if they're doing their job, they're playing, they're dancing with their ears. In other words, we're really trying to be tuned into one another. There must be a, a, a tremendous amount of empathy on stage. Um, we need to be communicating on all kinds of different levels. Um, there's a trust on stage. This work couldn't happen without an absolute trust um, um, on stage. Because um, it's scary. It's scary to us. We don't know what's going to come next. And you're in front of a whole group of people. That's intimidating, even if you've done it a lot and love doing it. Um, so um, the trust enables you not to, to be afraid to follow your instincts. And in the end, this is all about following your instincts. There's Georg Hoffmann, who plays percussion, a musician I've worked with again for the last 30 years. There's Mao Arata. Um, one of the dancers, the female dancer, um, who worked for 18 years with Makoto Matsushima, who's the other male dancer, um, who is one of the founding members. So he was there for close to 30 years with uh, a group called Papa Tara Homara. So they had 18 years together. Gary and I have had 30 years together, and now the four of us have had seven years together. It comes back to this thing of really not knowing Japanese. Sometimes the two of them are in stitches, like a crying with laughter. And I'm laughing too, but I actually don't know why. Um, uh, um, or I have an idea why. Um, they're both people of tremendous depth. I mean, so they're these amazing dancers. Of course, they're both martial arts black belts. In fact, Mao was a karate champion in her division of Japan. She teaches at a, at a sports science university. She's got an osteopathy degree. Um, Makoto graduated from Fine Arts School of Tokyo. So that they, they have this wide range of interests Plus, he's an avid biker and, you know, can fix and take apart and build bicycles from scratch. My, my colleagues are, are these marvelous artists who I would like to know on a deeper level, just part of our rehearsal practice, honestly, is just sitting around and talking or having a beer or cooking a meal or something. It's building this empathy and trust that's essential to allowing your instincts to roam freely on the stage. So I, 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 I dearly wish I could speak with them in their native tongues because I think I would understand so much more about, about them. At the Q&A after, which is something we like to do, because it allows people to sort of flesh this out. What does this mean to you all, or what are you trying to tell us? 
if, if you are, and we're actually not trying to tell them a thing, um, they ask us if we're telling a story. And in that sense, our work is very narrative-like and is telling a story, but it's not telling a specific story. It's just story-like and it's unfolding and it's arc and it's growth. Um, the story is just the story of what happened in that moment. That the things you see or the things you hear would be recognizable to you know Eastern audiences or Western audiences, but it's not Eastern work and it's not Western work. It's a meeting of minds with this common language and the improvisation is the common language. Uh, but I can't know.